Hello, in the video today we're going to take a detailed look at how ionic bonding works. So before we begin, just a quick recap from the last video. Ionic bonding happens between metal and non-metal atoms. It involves transferring of electrons and we have the formation of ions which attract each other with electrostatic forces of attraction. One example is sodium chloride and I suggest you become familiar with this one because, it, because it's actually uh, quite an important example. And the formula for sodium chloride is NaCl, as you can see in brackets there. So here we have a small sample of sodium metal. But if we were to look at one of the atoms of sodium metal, and we have done the method for drawing atoms previously, but if we take a look at a metal, sorry, an atom of sodium metal, you'll see that it has 11 protons and therefore 11 electrons. You'll remember that protons carry a positive charge and electrons carry a negative charge and therefore we have a balanced number of protons and electrons in the atom. If we were to then look at an atom of chlorine, so here's our chlorine gas and you may know that chlorine gas exists as Cl2 so there's two atoms of chlorine there together but we're just referring to one atom at the moment here for this example. Here we have an atom of chlorine and if you were to draw out the arrangement of electrons in chlorine, it would look something like that. You'll notice that the electrons are dots in the sodium and crosses in the chlorine. That's just so we can follow the path of the electrons in this example. They are both actually electrons though. So chlorine has 17 protons and 17 electrons, therefore they are balanced. So how does ionic bonding work? Well, we said it involves the transferring of electrons. So if we look at the outermost electron from the atom of sodium, you can see it can be transferred to the outer shell of chlorine. That means we now have a full outer shell on the sodium metal. We say it has achieved the electronic structure in other words, we're talking about the arrangement of electrons. So we talk about its electronic structure. We say it has gained the electronic structure of a noble gas. And by the electronic structure of a noble gas, we mean it has a full outermost shell. So you can see there for sodium, we have a full outermost shell. But if you look carefully at the chlorine as well, we have a full outermost shell as well. The problem is, however, we have lost an electron from sodium. So therefore it now has 10 electrons and chlorine has gained an electron. That means there is an imbalance in pluses and minuses, positive and negative charges. We have one extra positive charge. So now the sodium has a plus one charge and the chlorine has a minus one charge. That means they both have electrostatic forces of attraction. So they have opposite charges which attract each other and this is where we get our ionic bond. We get attraction between the sodium ion and the chloride ion, and therefore we get our bond. We can actually show this in a slightly different way. So here is a summarized diagram for our sodium atom. So there's our sodium atom. We've got one electron in the outer shell, as shown by that little dot, and there's our chlorine atom. The electrons shown with crosses and this is the electronic arrangement or the electronic structure of those two. After they have become ions we have a sodium ion with a plus one charge and the name chlorine changes to chloride when it becomes an ion so we have a chloride ion. And the way we show this is that we put a square bracket and a little plus sign or a minus sign depending on which ion we have and we can show the electronic structure as shown below those two diagrams. Now it's not just two atoms or ions that attract each other for sodium chloride. There's lots of them attracting each other and as you can see in that little diagram there. So we have our chloride ion there and our sodium atoms, sorry, sodium ions, sodium ions there. Everything in green is a sodium ion and chloride ions are in that yellow color with the negative charge. And they are in a what we call a lattice structure like this and the forces of attraction act in all directions as shown by these red lines I'm drawing in now. Okay, we're gonna look at this in more detail in another video, but those red lines show the electrostatic forces of attraction between the ions of sodium and chloride in the compound sodium chloride. Okay, just a quick note there to say the electrostatic forces act in all directions. And there we have a summary of the formation of sodium chloride. 
We can have another go with magnesium chloride and see how that works. So we can see on the left hand side we have an atom of magnesium and we have two atoms of chlorine there. And you'll see why we need two in a minute. Firstly, you can see two electrons in the outer shell of magnesium, magnesium being in group two. So one electron would be transferred to the one chlorine atom and the other to the other chlorine atom. Therefore, magnesium has lost two electrons. It has lost two negative charges, so it's left with a plus two charge. So the magnesium ion will have two extra protons compared to the electrons, and so it has ends up with a plus two charge. That's quite important, so we can highlight that. Now in terms of our chlorine, we've, also, we've already seen that it will gain one electron to get a noble gas configuration, so it only needs one electron in the outer shell to fill it up, and that happens the same for each chlorine atom to become a chloride ion. And so we can write this out like this, as we did previously. Magnesium, The magnesium ion is written like that with a two plus, and the chloride ions are written with the square brackets with a little minus sign. And you can see why we need two chloride ions because the magnesium has a plus two charge, so we need two negative charges to balance it out. One more example then, this is magnesium oxide. And again, magnesium has two electrons in the outer shell. Oxygen is missing two electrons if it wants a noble gas configuration or a noble gas structure. So now we have our magnesium with a plus two charge as we saw previously. And in fact, we can get rid of that outer shell there to show that we have a full outer shell. And we have our oxygen with a full outer shell, but now with a two minus charge because it's gained two extra electrons. So we have a plus two charge and a minus two charge, so we only need one ion of each to become MgO. So in this slide, we're just gonna look at a little pattern that we know in the periodic table. We're looking at group one and two and group six and group seven. And we know, so you must remember, that all the elements in group one going down there they will form ions with a plus one charge. Because they all have one electron in the outer shell, they will produce ions with a one plus charge. All the elements in group two have two electrons in the outer shell, which they will lose, and so they produce ions with a two plus charge because they lose two electrons to get that noble gas structure. So if you just took calcium, for example, you know that it will end up with a two plus charge when it forms an ion. With our group six, all of them have a similar pattern as well. They form ions with a two minus charge because they all gain two electrons. And for group seven, they all gain one electron, so they will all have a charge of minus one. So bromine there, you know straight away because it's in group seven, will end up as an ion of minus one. Sulfur there will be minus two because it's in group six. So there we go. Let's highlight group one, two, six, and seven and highlight the kind of ions formed by each of those groups. Remember not to get the word atom and the word ion mixed up. They are slightly different, but they behave very differently, and they are quite uh, important and specific keywords, so don't get those two mixed up. But that's it for ionic bonding with the example of sodium chloride. We're going to do a little bit more work on this in the next video, but for now, that's it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon.